Hi, I'm Dr. Messina. One of my subscribers had requested that I post a video showing what you can expect to see during a laser tattoo removal process and what you could expect the tattoo to do in response to that laser. When I first examine a tattoo for removal, one of the first things I do is try to evaluate how much ink is actually in there. See, we're looking at it from the top down. We're not looking at them from the side, so we really can't tell how much ink is in there. But what I do is I feel it with my finger. If I could feel the tattoo, then I know there's either a lot of ink or a thicker scar or a bit of both. And it'll change the process. A lot of ink or a scar tattoo generally adds two to three sessions to the process is when we start the lasering process, we get cavitation. This is from an older video that I posted a few years back. But you could see the tattoo was flat, and as we're lasering it, it's creating a gas. That's a very good sign. If you notice, we haven't broken the skin. The, the gas is trapped under the skin and obscures the tattoo for a little while. It's a pet peeve of mine because a lot of places will show this and it'll give the appearance that they got the tattoo off in one session. That cavitation is only going to last about 20 minutes. It's a gas that's trapped under the skin and it either gets absorbed or seeps out over the next 20 minutes. Now if you notice, the tattoo is raised and it's going to stay raised for the next week or so. Now everybody's a little different. Most of the time within that first week it's back to the way it was before. Every once in a while I have a patient it'll go six weeks it'll still be raised. It's from bleeding into the dermis and that's what happens. Remember we're creating a wound and then the immune cells are taking the ink from that wound. Now as we go on in the process and we could start to see through the ink we could actually see the pinpoint hemorrhage or the tiny droplets of blood in the dermis. And as you see, this tattoo is not only raised, but it has a reddish, maroonish color to it. That's blood under the skin. And again, this is a normal response and it's a desirable response. And if you look at the edges of the tattoo, you'll see pinpoint or punctate hemorrhages. In other words, where the tattoo border ends and the fresh skin begins, you might see some little red dots. Again, a good sign. What I don't want to ever see is the epidermis or the outer skin rupturing and blood come out. I don't want to see that at any time during my tattoo removal process. Now, sometimes we develop blisters. When it comes to blisters, it is a very, very common uh, side effect of laser tattoo removal, and it usually heals quite well. Now, there are certain inks that blister very easily. Red with the KTP blisters very easily, so when I am lasering red, I try to make the red cavitate very faintly, not like the white we just saw on the black. I like to see it just become a little haze. I'm not fond of removing red tattoos and having blister formation because the risk of losing skin pigmentation is greater. Now, some lasers, such as my ruby laser, if I'm using that on green ink or dark blue ink, I always warn the patient they might make a blister despite even setting it on its lowest settings. It just seems to be a property of that color with that specific laser. And again, it heals very well. I tell people to care for it. You could pop the blister if you want, then put Pacitracid and Neosporin on it. Just don't pick at it or itch it. Now, scar formation is what we see here. This is not what you ever want to see. This is from either using the wrong laser, as we see in this arm with the big red lines, that I suspect they used a long pulse laser as opposed to a Q-switched laser. The long pulse laser fires significantly slower, throws a significant amount of heat into that tattoo, and it creates a scar very similar to what we're seeing here. Now this picture we're seeing of the black tattoo with the top cavitated in the bottom, it's a nice demonstration of cavitation, raising the tattoo, 
and then the black ink at the bottom not raised. Now this picture here, you can see there is some scar formation already. What we're worried about is hypopigmentation along with that scar, as you could see at the three o'clock position, that tissue is whiter. That, I'm assuming, is from a previous laser process. And this is on the arm is scar formation. Now, when we're dealing with red ink in particular, if we go too high on the fluence and create a lot of blistering, we run the risk of getting hypopigmentation. This is what we're seeing in this picture. A lot of white hypopigmentation on this forearm and some scarring where it's raised. The subscriber who was concerned about the edges appearing raised, I believe he may have had a situation like this anchor where the tattoo is outlined first and then the central area filled in. And when we remove tattoos, the thinner areas come off before the thicker areas. So the central area of this anchor, for instance, we have seen skin going through it, it's broken through already. Yet the edges, the outline still has ink. This is what I think this subscriber was concerned about. And I told him that as long as it's not getting raised, and not becoming scarred and blistering after every treatment. It's probably just a volume of ink and it will eventually catch up. I think this was a good representation of what we could expect during a normal tattoo removal process. We've seen cavitation, we've seen thickening of the ink, we've seen the outlines taking longer than the center areas. Shaded tattoos, just by the way, come off much easier than tattoos with black outlines around them that are colored in. We've seen blistering and we've seen scar formation as well as hypopigmentation. This should be a good representation as to what we could expect to see. I hope you learned something with this video and have a good day.